In this video, I'm going to help you decide when it is time to go up in bow weight or potentially how to determine if you are over bowed, meaning if the bow is too heavy for you to draw back, whether that be draw weight or physical mass weight. So we're going to go over a few different things in this video. We're going to go over how to go up in bow weight safely and smartly when you have limbs that can be replaceable in risers, such as an ILF bow like this one. I'm also going to cover, like I said, how to make sure that you're not shooting with too much draw weight or too much mass weight and how to recognize the difference between the two. Uh, but before I get into that, I do want to ask something and see if anybody out there is uh, going to help me out here. So I'm currently working on a few different projects, and one of them is researching and gathering data on risers. Specifically, I'm on the lookout for two risers, actually potentially three. Uh, so if you have any of these risers, message me below, send me an email through my website, contact me somehow, way, shape, or form. There is an email form on not just this YouTube channel, but also links in the description below. And I'll put a card at the top up there to my website, jkaminski.com. Shoot me an email from there. It really helped me out if you have any of these risers. I am looking for specifically a Hoyt Formula RX. I'm looking for a 25 and a 27 inch riser. I am willing to pay for them and uh, take care of shipping and all that stuff. If you have any, I don't care what color it is, as long as it's right-handed. Um, I may settle for a left-handed version. So if you have one of those two, shoot me a message, let me know. And potentially, I may be interested in some GMX risers too in 25 and 27 as well. I had all these risers and, you know, when uh, I went and visited my home club back after the 2012 games, or maybe it was before the 2012 games, I think it was before, I donated to them a pile of equipment, including all of my Formula RX risers, my GMXs, all the limbs and everything that I had. And, you know, I'm glad I helped out the club, but I wish I had a few items that I gave them. So uh, if you wouldn't mind, if you do have any of those kicking around, collecting dust on the shelf or have been long forgotten in the closet, please shoot me a message. I am interested in picking up at least the Formula RXs and potentially the GMX. So let me know what you got uh, and uh, we'll go from there. Anyway, let's get right into the video now that that's gone and over with. I wanna talk about how to go up in bow weight safely. Now, there are many different principles and ways to do this. This is very easy with this style of bow, which is called an ILF bow, International Limb Fitment Bow. That means that this company and this company are the same, but I could use different limbs and different risers. As long as they're all ILF, I can snap them in there, be able to shoot a bow without having to change both components, all right? Disclosure really quick, I'm gonna gloss over a lot of things quickly and then break it down for you so hopefully you can understand it. So generally, the rough rule of thumb is that you have a 10% range of adjustment on these limb bolts with a standard ILF riser. That means that if these limbs are marked 30 pounds, that means that in the middle adjustment, I may be at 30 pounds at a 28 inch draw length. And if I am, then the limb bolts, as I adjust these or tiller bolts, depending on what you want to uh, describe them as, as I adjust the limb bolts, if I went in all the way, I could get a maximum of 31 and a half pounds, that's a 5% increase. Or if I went out all the way, I could go down to 28 and a half pounds, that's a 5% decrease. So that would mean I have a 10% range of adjustment. So say for example, I'm shooting very comfortable and I'm really happy with how the shots are going, but I wanna go up in bow weight because I wanna shoot 70 meters, 90 meters, or just go up in bow weight. And what you can do is if you are comfortable with these 30 pound limbs, we're gonna say it's a 28 inch draw length again, limb bolts all the way in, they have bottomed out, and you are now shooting somewhere in the neighborhood of 31 and a half pounds. But say you wanted to go up in bow weight, how would you go about that? Well, the safest way to do that, and the smartest way to do that, would to be buy limbs that you can shoot backed all the way out that are only marginally heavier than the current system you are setting up with. So for this example that I'm going over right now, 
Again, 30 pound limbs all the way in, measuring 31 and a half pounds. I would wanna get something along the lines of a 34 pound limb, give or take. Each limb manufacturer generally goes up in every two pound increments, unless it's more of a traditional style, and then it may go up in five pound increments, but the general rule of thumb is two pounds. So if these are 30s, and I got a maximum of 31 and a half, that means my 34s all the way out 34 would be in the middle. You remove 5% of that. That would be somewhere in the neighborhood of almost two pounds, give or take. It would be just under that, it'd be 1.75 pounds or so like that. So you'd be somewhere in the neighborhood of 32, 32 and a half pounds at the very most. So you're looking at about a half of a pound to one pound jump when you went to a four pound heavier limb. If that makes any sense, that's the best way to do it. Because then with those 34 pound limbs, as you have them all the way out to reduce the bow, the draw weight as much as possible, as you get stronger and stronger, you can slowly screw them in and go all the way up to almost 36 plus pounds. So you now have jumped from a capacity of right around 31 and a half pounds to now almost 36 pounds by switching a limb that is four pounds heavier but you'll be able to grow into it. It can be a bit confusing because limb weights are rated at a given draw length in a specific setting on the bow, but all that you need to know is whatever your peak draw weight is right now at your draw length, figure out what limbs you have and then decide how much you wanna go up by. You're gonna be looking at jumping up anywhere from four to six pounds on a set of limbs, but when you back your limb bolts out all the way, you're only gonna be actually jumping maybe a pound at the most when you do that kind of jump. Now this is different depending on the weight limbs you are shooting. If you're shooting 20 pound limbs and you're wanting to go up a pound, you might need to go to 22s instead of 24s because it's, again, the limb bolts is roughly a percentage of change, not necessarily actual draw weight of change because lighter limbs will adjust less on the limb bolts compared to heavier limbs because it's all about percentages, not necessarily exactly about weight itself. Don't be worried if you're drawing back way more or way less weight than the limbs are marked because they are draw length dependent. So that means that if I draw the bow back to 28 inches, right about here, these limbs are, we'll just say 24s, they're 24 pounds. But at my draw length, near 30, well over 29 inches, it's gonna be much more than that. The rough rule of thumb, is one inch of draw length change above or below 28 inches is gonna give you about two pounds of draw weight. So if you have a 32 inch draw length, you're shooting 30 pound limbs and they're in the middle setting, you're gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood of 38 pounds of draw weight, somewhere in that neighborhood. So yeah, they're marked 30s, but because your draw length is four inches longer than 28, that gives you eight more pounds, so you're gonna be drawing right around 38 pounds. So again, not really important. Those are all details that really don't matter a whole lot. I just wanna make sure that nobody's freaking out in case their limbs are super heavy compared to what they were expecting. Now, if you don't have a bow scale, I will put links in the description below on where you can grab one in case you don't have one. It is super important to measure your draw weight. That way you can kind of be consistent when setting up bows and making these adjustments and changing your limbs. You wanna make sure that you're not completely out of the realm of what you're expecting. So that way you can make more of an educated guess moving forward. Okay, so now how do you know when you're ready to go up and draw weight? Before I get too far into this, I want to give you a reason as to why you would not want to have too much draw weight or too much mass weight on your bow and what that would cause. Being overbowed really just causes a lot of issues. That causes you to not necessarily have as much benefit from the shooting as you could. Say for example, you're trying to make your form better or you're trying to hone your skill. The bow is too heavy and it's either preventing you from getting into the positions you want to, to do the specific styles of form or shooting, or it's actually limiting the amount of arrows you're able to shoot, thus reducing the amount of benefit you can get from each training session or it's actually preventing you from even just shooting accurately. In general, yes, it's true, higher draw weights will clean up your release and it can potentially make you a better shooter or shoot better groups, but that's only if everything else is still perfect and you're able to manage the bow. If you're struggling and the bow is shooting you and you're not shooting the bow, then that's definitely 
not ideal. You have to be able to be in the position and the health and the shape to be able to manage what you're doing with this tool in order for the projectile, the arrow, to land consistently in a group downrange. You've gotten to the point of where while you're shooting, you have very little fatigue by the end of a practice session, especially if you have lengthy practice sessions or the ability to shoot, say, more than 100 arrows. If you can shoot more than 100 arrows in a given session, even if it takes you half of the day, totally acceptable, totally fine, and, and you probably are ready to go up and draw weight. Now you might be saying, holy cow, 100 arrows, that's a lot. To some people, it is a lot. So it may come down to a couple of other factors that I will cover, but I will cover more of them in the how to make sure you're not overbowed section. So pay attention to those uh, you know, scenarios. If you feel that way, then I advise definitely not to go up and bow weight and just to shoot more with what you've got. So how to know if you wanna actually go up and draw weight or how do you know if you're actually ready is if you just feel relatively low amounts of fatigue or low amounts of struggle while shooting. Like you're able to get into the positions you want, you can easily draw back, anchor how you need, and have a relatively stable feel of the bow without an excessive amount of shaking, an excessive amount of <clears throat> exertion to get the bow back, or something along those lines. Also, if you're noticing that you are excessively fatigued, say after only 20 arrows, I would, I would absolutely not recommend to go up and bow weight at that time. You need to spend some more time with what you've got. You know, archery is a very unique sport in the fact that we do stuff in manners that are not standard for everyday life. We stand still, we rotate, we do one-sided thing, it's repetitive, it's using muscles that usually aren't used in normal, natural, everyday life. So how can you expect not to be sore from shooting archery? Being sore is fine. And especially being sore a few days afterwards is totally normal because of the way our body repairs muscle damage. And when we're doing a physical exercise, including drawing a bow back, we actually are damaging our muscles and that's why we are sore for the next few days because our body's working on repairing that damage. So being sore is normal, but if you start to, again, strain, stress, and just be overall not controlled and not really comfortable with what you're doing, then it's definitely not time to go up and bow weight, draw weight rather. If you're really wanting to shoot further distances, you want to get those newest, latest, greatest limbs, or you know, just overall have an upgrade, going up in bow weight, draw weight, is always an option to consider because if you can, in general, it's better for the shooting as far as performance is concerned if you can control the draw weight. That's a big caveat. You have to be able to control it. You have to be able to do the thing that you need to do that is control the bow because you are shooting the bow and then the bow shoots the arrow. So it's really hard in general to describe when it is time to go up and draw weight, but it's a lot easier for me to say when you absolutely shouldn't go up and bow weight or how to recognize if you are overbowed. So now we'll go over how to decide if you are overbowed with draw weight. That is the weight of the actual string tension at full draw. So excess shaking, excess fatigue, excess soreness, and things of those natures are always dead giveaways. But what about if you're just kind of struggling to, say, get into anchor? You're struggling to maintain the bow grip. You're struggling to maintain your elbow rotation, all of those things. It really is so dependent on where you are as an individual, but the dead giveaways are obvious as far as excess shaking, you're unable to control it especially if earlier in the day you're pretty fresh you're really solid really stable you don't move nearly at all but by the 30th arrow it's like you're just really straining to get that bow back same thing with over exertion having to really strain to draw the bow back if you feel pinches stabs really sharp acute pains those are always causes for concern may not necessarily be overbowed scenarios but it definitely could be poor technique, which bad technique can be caused by too much draw weight. Because if this bow is super heavy, I'd have a really hard time of getting it back and I'd do everything I could to lean back and try to use gravity to pull the bow back and do all sorts of weird things that are non-conventional and things that are just not supposed to be done. Other things to decide whether or not you're overbowed would be things if, 
say you're shooting several days in a row, you're shooting a lot of arrows because it's spring break or summer break or whatever it is, and you've got time and you wanna get ready for the tournament coming up, and you shoot a bunch of days in a row, and then all of a sudden you get out of bed the next morning and you're just unable to move. Your back's seized and locked up, and it's really affecting normal everyday activities. Not archery activities, but everyday activities to the point of where you're having to change how you put on your socks or tie your shoes or something like that, then I would absolutely consider either lowering the volume of arrows that you've shot or the draw weight itself, depending on the scenario and depending on what you're doing and your specific goals and scenarios and setups. Generally, if your archery is starting to impact your normal everyday life, you're probably overbowed or overtraining or you're just not quite ready for it, or you need to do a better job at recovery. I have a link in the description below for supplementation and how to help deal with muscle soreness and things like that. You might be surprised at how much some simple dietary supplements can change the way you feel after a heavy day of shooting. Generally, being overbowed is more of a fatigue related thing. However, there are some more intricate details in regards to the ability to control the bow itself. Say you have very inconsistent timing. The timing is how long you're at full draw that you're having to pull through the clicker or whatever it is to make the shot happen and it's just not happening. Now it could be inconsistent draw length, it could be a million different things, but if all things were totally uh, you know, normal and ready and, and acceptable, and the only thing being the bow is too heavy, I would say by the end of a training day after a good you know, 80 plus arrows after you've warmed up, you got the cobweb shaking out, you're in, hitting your rhythm, but then all of a sudden you fall flat on your face and it's like you just hit a wall and you just can't move past it. That's definitely a scenario of being overbowed. So that about covers how to decipher whether or not you're overbowed in regards to draw weight. But what about being overbowed in regards to mass weight? That's the actual physical mass weight, the weight, the heft of the bow itself. And as you can see, there is one weight on this bow. This is a bare bow setup, it happens to be my wife's. But you can put a lot of weights on this, these bows these days, especially because you've got mounts here, 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 and here for weights. And some of the newer bows have even more than that. And so how do you determine whether or not you have too much bow weight, too much mass weight on the riser itself? And that is not necessarily as obvious as draw weight because the draw weight really will make you fatigue and shake whereas the mass weight of the bow really kind of isolates the deltoid on the bow, the bow side. So if you notice that it's really cramping, fatiguing, burning excessively, too much, too early in the training session, then it's obvious you have too much mass weight. If you're unable to manage the sight picture of the bow and it's just so wandering and so like random and it's especially really difficult to lift up from the bottom and it's not a mental thing, it's not target panic, but it's the mass weight that's causing it, then you should go down in mass weight. In general, more mass weight can be shot with higher draw weights or vice versa because the higher your draw weight is, the actual easier it is to maintain the, the vertical position of the bow in space and it's easier to manipulate it because it's almost holding back and holding up automatically within the system once you actually get back to full draw. So I wouldn't say that my wife should be able to shoot somewhere in the neighborhood of 30, 35 ounces on the bow in addition to the riser itself like I do because she only shoots in the neighborhood of a high 20-ish draw weight. Whereas I'm shooting well into the 40s, up into the middle to upper 40s as draw weight and I can easily add 30 plus ounces on the front of my bow to help make it balance a lot better. But it's not that much heavier for me, at least relative to what I feel her bow. If I feel her bow at full draw, it kind of sits really nice and comfortably for me. Well, my bow does the same thing. It's just a little bit more difficult to actually maintain all of the positioning because my draw weight is higher. And because my draw, draw weight is higher, I can also have more mass weight. So there is definitely a ratio there that's not set in stone. It changes from each person to person, so I can't make a recommendation there. But definitely, being able to recognize when you are overbowed, struggling with too much draw weight, struggling with too much mass weight, and being able to make those adjustments to make sure that that's not gonna continue to be a problem is really critical 
in development, especially development, especially after you've come back from a long time off, don't expect to be able to pick up your bow and shoot the same caliber of shot, the same quality of shot from when you used to shoot it a decade ago, or you've never done it, but your friends have done it and so they give you their bow. Don't expect to be able to use their bow with proficiency and excellence. It will take time to develop muscles. It will take time to develop motor control. And overall, you'll gain more starting slower, progressing up with not just your skill level, but your strength abilities, and slowly making progress to get better and better and better each time you go out and shoot archery. You're not gonna go from zero to 100. Nobody can do that in any sport. You have to progress into it. And if you are overbowed, you will cause issues down the road, including really limiting your ability to just make quality shots and have quality training sessions. Overall, I want you to be able to shoot archery longer and have more fun doing it. So not being overbowed is one of the main things to make sure that you are not doing when you are a new archer just starting off. So it's just a really important thing. Thanks to my patrons for having a discussion the other day about draw weights and things like that and requesting it in my content suggestion page on my Discord server. It is helpful for me to hear what people want to know more about because, you know, I never would even think about producing a video about being overbowed and how to recognize that because I've been doing this for so long and I'm really sorry, but I've forgotten more than I can remember at this point. And, uh, you know, how to mitigate and deal with being overbowed and going up and draw weight and just taking for granted how to make limb changes from lighter limbs to heavier limbs without going way too out of what I'm capable of. I've just done it a million times and I've recommended it a million times. And so, uh, you know, my thanks to people who are still suggesting content, not only because sometimes I want to just make sure I'm giving you what you want, but also it's a reminder of, hey, People don't know that stuff and you need to break it down for them. So I appreciate that and I hope this helps you out. Consider subscribing, liking this uh, video, sharing it with your friends. It really helps get the word out there. I can't thank everybody enough and really appreciate the support that everybody's given me, whether that be from buying apparel, booking coaching, grabbing the books that are there behind me on my website, or signing up for Patreon, supporting me through PayPal, you name it. I really appreciate everybody out there and I'm genuinely excited to pump out more content. As you can see, I've got some lighting under the cabinet now. I've started putting some things away. So I've got some organization stuff going on and uh, yeah, I just, I can't be more excited for the future of this channel. And uh, yeah, I really hope this helped. Anyway, take care. Thank <laughs> you.